When you want to do something big, you have to do it as a collective. Take for instance skyscrapers. No one human can build a skyscraper by him or herself. It takes many people acting collectively to achieve these monumental feats. Now if you want to understand how collective action works, you have to ask yourself, how do the individuals within a group coordinate their behavior to achieve collective tasks? That is, how do the individuals communicate with each other? But collective behavior are not restricted to humans or even to organisms with the brain. In fact, in the laboratory, I study group behaviors of the smallest organisms on Earth, bacteria. Bacteria don't have voices, so they've evolved a different mechanism to communicate. Since they don't have words, sound words, what bacteria use are chemicals as their words. Bacteria make and release these small molecules, and they let them go outside of the cells. And so when the cells are at low number, since bacteria are small and the world is big, the molecules diffuse away from the cells and the bacteria can't detect those molecules. If they don't detect the molecules, it tells them they're at low cell number so they should carry out individual behaviors. The molecules build up outside of the cells in proportion to the cell number that's present. When the molecules hit a certain threshold level, it tells the bacteria they have neighbors around and then they all change their behavior in unison and they begin to carry out group behaviors. The kinds of group behaviors that are controlled by chemical communication are behaviors that it takes lots of cells acting in unison to make those behaviors effective. So for example, biofilm formation is controlled by chemical communication. A biofilm is a large community of many cells. So only if many cells are present together do the bacteria initiate biofilm formation. And that's controlled by this chemical communication process that we call quorum sensing. We spend a lot of time in our lab researching how bacteria talk to each other. But most of this work's been done using experimental conditions that don't really resemble the natural environments of bacteria, such as shaking plants. In their natural environment, bacteria actually usually live on surfaces with liquid flowing over them, such as in soil or medical catheters and stents. So how do bacteria act as a collective in these real environments? Well, soil and medical devices are usually difficult to look into, so we developed a way to replicate these natural environments for bacteria in microfluidic chambers, where we can directly look at what's going on. Microfluidics is a method for studying the motion of liquids in pipes and channels. In this case, the channels are comparable to the diameter of a human hair. This experimental approach has proven very useful because the materials are transparent and consequently we can use them under a microscope. Because the size is comparable to that of a biological cell, this approach finds many uses in biology, engineering, and material science. In the work we have done with Knut and Bonnie, we were able to merge the fields of molecular biology and engineering by creating experimental environments where biofilms and bacteria were studied in the presence of fluid motions. And in this way, we were able to make new kinds of measurements and observations that no one had made before. In these microfluidic channels that mimic the natural environments, we actually found that bacteria don't just form biofilms on the walls of the channel, but they also form biofilm streamers, which span the distances between corners in the microfluidic channel. Now, what's interesting is that these streamers actually grow very quickly and cause a rapid and sudden clogging transition of the channel. These kinds of clogging transitions have actually been found in industrial and medical settings before, but no one knew how the clogging actually happened. We know that quorum sensing controls biofilm formation, so if we can somehow jam the quorum sensing communication mechanism, we would expect that we would somehow delay or even completely avoid biofilm formation so we don't clog the channels. Now recently we discovered some molecules that can actually block quorum sensing and we expect that these molecules will play an important role in future technological applications.